Hi, it's Miss House. If you're looking in the file for the actual 3.3, 3.4 homework, this is number six. They give us a function named n of p, where n stands for the number of cells based on the price. They tell it it is 90 minus 4p squared. They also tell us that the price fluctuates between a dollar and four dollars. So we're not talking about any price range, only prices between a dollar and four dollars. Now, they want us to examine what happens as the price increases. So they want us to look at first the average rate of change. And of course, the average rate of change is the same as the slope. And that's our f of b, y number 2, minus f of a, which is y number 1, divided by b, x number 2, minus a, x number 1. So we're looking at what's happening between two points, A and B, and their values, F of A and F of B. Okay, so, and you can just think of that as X1, X2, Y1, Y2. They tell us um, that they want us to take a look at it when the price is going from $2 to three dollars. So this is going to be our B, that's our second X, and this is going to be our A. So we have to calculate F of B, that's 90 minus 4 times 3 squared, so 90 minus 4 times 9, that's 90 minus 36, which is 54. F of A, that's when the price is $2. That's going to be 90 minus 4 times 2 squared, or 90 minus 4 times 4, 90 minus 16 is 74. So at this point, our average rate of change, or our slope, becomes 54 minus 74 over 3 minus 2. That's negative 20 over 1 or negative 20. So as the price changes from $2 to $3, the number of boxes of nails goes down by 20. So it decreases uh, by 20. Now the next thing they want us to look at is the instantaneous rate of change. And this is our limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So instead of looking at between two points, like we did before here and here, and we're looking at two points. We're looking only at one point, so that's going to be the slope at an instant or the slope of the tangent line. So we need this formula because, see, the second point was over here, a distance of h away, and what we're doing is we're moving this point back till h gets to 0, and we're right there at that one instant. Okay. Now, our formula is n of p is 90 minus 4p squared. And I think we've done enough of these by the long method. That's this method here. Okay, the definition method. I shouldn't say the long method. It's the definition method. But there is a shortcut for doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the shortcut so you can 
from here on out, every single problem you do, just do the shortcut. Okay. And there's short, different kinds of shortcuts for different uh, kinds of functions. So the first thing is, we're going to call it f prime of x. Now this instantaneous rate of change is also known as the derivative. And we use this notation f prime of x to mean the derivative of f, right? The original function. So if f of x equals c, a constant, f prime of x equals 0. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. If the number's constant, it can't change. So it's change, the derivative, it's instant change, it's change at an instant is 0 because it's not changing. It's staying the same all the time. Okay, if f of x equals x to a power, okay, so p equals an exponent, and it can be any real number, okay, no limitations on what that number can be. Then f prime of x is the power times the base to the power minus 1. So if I have something like f of x equals x squared, f prime of x equals 2x to the 1, because I'm going to multiply my power in front and reduce this exponent by 1. Now, that's a lot shorter than doing f of x plus h minus f of x over h, right? Look, if our function is f of x is x squared, and we have to do f of x plus h minus f of x over h, and then we have to take the limit as h goes to 0, that would be f of x plus h would be x plus h squared is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Then we would have to subtract the original function f of x. So I'd have to subtract the x squared. That would give me 2xh plus h squared. Then I would have to divide everything by h. Divide by h, divide by h. That would give me 2x plus h. And now I take the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus h, and look what happens. That's 2x plus 0, which is 2x. Same thing I got here when I used the power rule. So for this function, n of p, 90 minus 4p squared, we can use shortcuts on this. There's one more I need to tell you, though. If you have a function with a constant times x to a power, it's going to be the constant times the power base to the power minus 1. So you just multiply. When you bring this exponent down, you just multiply it, and that's how you get your f prime of x. And so we need that for this one because there is a constant in front of our p squared. So instead of doing all that f of x plus h minus f of x, over h, and the limit as h goes to 0, there's a shortcut for this, and it is that n prime of p will be 0, because that's a constant, minus 4 times 2, p to the 1, because this 2 minus 1 would be a 1, so that's just going to be a negative 8p. And that's what we would get if we went through this whole process for our function. We don't have to, though. It's the, that's what's so great about these shortcuts. Now, fundamentally, you should understand that the process works because it's doing this. Okay, now in this one, now that we already know our derivative, okay, we know our, this is our formula for our instantaneous rate of change. 
okay we are asked to find it when the price is 2 so negative 8 times 2 is negative 16 so demand that is the number of boxes sold that's what this n stands for the number of nail boxes sold it's going down by 16 boxes when the price is two dollars okay and then they ask us to do it for three so negative eight of three is going to be negative 24 so the demand is going down right by 24 boxes when the price is three dollars so they ask us to come to a conclusion at the very end of this now think this conclusion I think will seem logical to you as the price of something goes up fewer and fewer people are willing or able to purchase it so demand goes down now this is not true for every single item for example if you're a parent who has a baby that has to have a specific type of formula if that price goes up you still have to buy that formula however if you're stopping by Starbucks and you're getting a coffee every day and it goes up by a dollar you could say nah, I can do I can do my coffee at home or I can just skip coffee or I can have a Red Bull right so increases in prices typically will cause fewer consumers to purchase it all right so there's a the the sentence they ask us to complete says as the price increases from two dollars to three dollars the demand that is the number of boxes sold decreases and this is the average rate of change because two dollars to three dollars we know um, both prices it's not an instantaneous it's the average so this is what we did in part a the demand decreases at the rate in part a then it says the change is expected because of what we just talked about because customers are less willing to purchase more expensive items and in this case we're talking about nails so you can go get a different kind of nail at a different store so your demand goes down if your price goes up 